Hi everyone, welcome to Potluck Food Talks. This is another The Line episode. The Line, because the last one was so good, man. I love The Line episodes. <laughs> love that shit. It makes, me, it makes me happy and sad at the same time, you know. So we were thinking about making a Line episode where we would talk about fucked up characters, which is not that difficult to find <laughs> in the rest of the world. <laughs> I can start if you want. Yeah, yeah, start. You, you kick it off. Get the ball rolling. So there was this place, like, the chef would come every morning. <laughs> and, like, like, the routine was that he would walk into the door, so everybody saw him walking. Oh, okay. And it was, you know, you were doing something else, but you would take, like, a, a plate and put it in the microwave so that the plate was nice and hot and warm. And then he would come, and, and he would take the plate and, and go away. So, and I would see this all over and over again. And then I, I would ask, like, what is it for? Oh, he, he likes his plates warm for his morning cocaine line. And I was like, okay. Fuck. Okay, okay, nice. <laughs> what difference does it make if you have a warm surface for... I don't know. I guess it makes it uh, steamy. Uh, it steams the, the liquid and it makes it more powdery. No idea, man. What country was this in? Germany. Really? Fuck. <laughs> That's next level. You know, you know what I kind of like to believe is that he, it doesn't make any difference to the cocaine. He just likes the warm feeling on his hands. Or on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> he must be like full contact, just like face bouncing into the plate. You know, like some people like their coffee warm, some people like it cold, you know? Like <laughs> of a- course, of course. I have a funny story of um, uh, a time where I was working in this like small restaurant um, in Germany also. And the chef was like, He was a pretty young guy, the head chef, and he uh, he was a bit weird. He had some like really strange moments. Sometimes he was totally fine, and sometimes he had just like these freak out moments. And I was very young, and um, he had a lot of issues with what I was doing, probably rightfully so. And um, <laughs> well, yeah, being totally honest, you know, I was very <laughs> green, very fresh. But I remember one time he came into the kitchen, and I had spent the morning there already, just me and the dishwasher, all right? And he comes in, he's kind of like doing his stuff, you know, and he looks into the, he's kind of talking, blah, 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 just like nonstop talking. He looks into the fridge and he closes the fridge and he's like, where's the staff pasta that was left over from yesterday? And I was like, um, I don't know. And he's like, there was pasta left over from yesterday. I want to know where it went. And I was like, well, I don't know. And he starts looking for it and he can't find it. He goes for all the fucking drawers, the fridges. Uh, and he's like, I know for a fact that I left some pasta there yesterday. I want to know what happened to it. And I was like, dude, I, I, I don't know where your pasta went. And we're talking about not like kilos of pasta. It was like, uh, I, I, know, I knew what he was talking about. It was like a, like a portion of pasta that was left over. And he went to the dishwasher. It was Italian. He was like, do you know what happened to the pasta? The dishwasher was like, no, no, I mean, no. And then he just went absolutely crazy. He started, no, no this is impossible. This is fruit waste. Somebody ate it. Somebody threw it away. I know. And I know it was one of you. And he just started freaking out. I was like, man, I really just started flipping out. And he was like, I'm going to find it. And I find out who the fuck it was. And he just like goes to this like big bin that's full of like garbage of like uh, organic waste. He just starts like digging, digging through this like stuff, just like throwing like (laughs) banana peels and onion peels and stuff like behind him. While me and the dishwasher just standing around him, we're like, what the fuck is happening? It's like 11 o'clock in the morning. And he's like, pa, 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 until he like finds this like scrap of pasta. And I remember him just like grabbing it in his hand and like raising it in the air, be like, aha, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it <laughs> at the very bottom of the fucking bin. I knew it. I knew one of you threw it away. And we just look at him in disbelief. And the dishwasher was like, Oh yeah, I sorry. He spoke like really bad English, and he was like, "Oh yeah, sorry, I threw it at the way this morning. That was me, sorry." And he, I remember him just like standing there with the pasta, just like squished in his hand, <laughs> and just being like, the tension just kind of dropped, and I think he just realized himself what the fuck he was doing there. I remember you told me that story, and that it was actually a place where we worked together, and and I remember that guy, he was obsessed with making bad staff meal. It was crazy. It was something like, no, no, no. I don't want anybody to invest any time in the staff meal or making something special or blah, blah, blah. 
And and I remember that because you told me that story when it happened many years ago. And and I remember it was a just pasta with tomato sauce. Yeah. You know? That portion must cost like 20 cents. Yeah. You know? And and going crazy about that and then making and I remember something like like I saw at that place because you learn a lot when you see people doing stuff wrong because you actually experience why it shouldn't be like that. And I remember the conversation during the staff meal was everybody talking about how bad the food was, you know, like yeah, what kind of input is that for a team that is supposed to give nice food to people, you know, like it's so stupid, man. It's just so stupid. It's so stupid. And it's like, a, it, it was a really good like showcase of like how not to be as a head chef and as a manager and as a person, because yeah, it's important not to waste food. It's important to have transparency and, you know, honesty and blah, blah, blah. But he wasn't actually worried about any of that. He was making a show of ego, of power. He was like, I want to know the truth, you know, like just because he was like, I am the one in charge here. I want an answer right now. You know, it was really misguided. And like you were saying, like the The thing about staff food, I always, I'm a strong believer that if you have a place that has bad staff food, it's a bad restaurant, you know, like it's a bad kitchen team. It's a, I mean, like as in not the chefs are bad, but the culture is bad. Absolutely. The culture is bad. The work yeah. ethic is bad. And it's not a place that you want to stay because if you don't take care of your people, they're not going to take care of anything. I've never seen like a, a very good place with bad staff exactly. food. Exactly. It yeah. doesn't exist. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And I've seen places where, you know, the workers bring their own food because they want to eat the, the food that, that is giving, which, which is such a no-go, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's really hard to get people there, you know, like to, to make certain people understand that, you know, I often, you know, when I was working in openings, um, But people sort of like, oh yeah, you know, star food, yeah. And I was like, no, star food is very important. It was sort of, yeah, people can just order something off the menu and like, we're not going to have like a break. We're just going to have people, they get their time and then they have like, you can take 20 minutes. Then afterwards you can take 20 minutes. I was like, no, that's not going to work. I mean, it's going to work, but it's going to make you, it's, it's going to make your restaurant shit. I mean, the, 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 I've worked in places that work yeah. like that, but it's just super inefficient, you know, yeah. like. Uh, there are places that work like that. You take something off the menu, you take your time, and but I think it's very important to give that half an hour yeah. break. You know, like it's important for everything, for mental health, for the quality of service and everything. And also not being, I remember in one place, it started like, yeah, you take half an hour break, but you're not getting paid for that half an hour. That, you know, people were getting paid at that place like eight euros per hour. So, It was a discussion about giving you four euros. I mean, uh, seriously, like at the end of the day, did this uh, this kind of saving money in the corners backfires if these are the wrong corners, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, from a business point of view, if that's where you're saving money, that's the wrong part. Like that's like, if you can't do that, you can't employ the people that you need for the restaurant that you have. Exactly. At a good rate. You know, like if it doesn't work, it's not the fault of the people that you hire. It's the fault of your system and the way that you've built your business. So like, you know, it's, uh, that's not the right course of action to take. You need to change other things that you can control. Um, but you can't just tell people, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have you take a break, you know? Well, there is also the, like the opposite extreme, uh, which would be people going too crazy about the staff food, yeah, you of know, course. like making people cry or, or these kind of things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I had a, there was a really funny situation in a, in a restaurant in, uh, in the Basque country, which is a very, very high end restaurant. And they took staff food very seriously as in staff food wasn't great to be honest with you. Like if I think back of it now, it was okay, but like they did have two chefs on permanently who only really took care of staff food. And it always had to be like a starter, a main course, a salad, and often like a dessert. And it had to be varied and, and stuff like that. Um, we would always like on a certain day make paella, you know, and just try to make it as nice as possible. Um, but, you know, what becomes apparent for a lot of people, that's also why staff food is so important, is that 
you put a chef who's like working on the fish section, right? And he's like making all these like nice dishes. Put him on star food. Let him cook seven dishes throughout the week just by himself. And it really shows you if he's a good chef or not, you know? Because you can replicate something that somebody else makes really well. But if you're like left on your own, then it really comes to show like if they're a good cook or not. And yeah, so a lot of people then realized that they weren't actually as good as they thought they were, I think. One example that comes to mind is like where this chef was making star food and uh, the owner of the restaurant, the head chef, who was usually never, ever there, he came in for star food that day. And obviously the guy was very scared. And um, he made lentil soup for star food, which is, you know, should be very easy to make, right? But it's the thing is like, if you make it just kind of half-assed, it's got to be very mediocre. If you make it really well, it's a delicious thing. But he didn't. He made it really half-assed. And um, so the owner of this restaurant is a very famous chef, comes in and eats the soup. And I remember he's just kind of like very serious, like no emotions, just gets a plate, sits down. Everybody's like, oh, he's here. And you know, oh, cool. Eats a couple of spoons, puts the spoon down, goes to the, the serving place. And he's sort of like, did you cook this uh, lentil soup? And he was like, yeah, tell me the recipe. And the guy was like, I, I don't know. I take the onion and I sweat it and blah. And he was sort of like, yeah. And he was like, why do you like it? And he's like, no, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's crap. And he was like, really, he really like didn't freak out at him, but he was just so ice cold and like in his face. And he was sort of like, do you want me to call my mother to come in here and show you how to cook a proper fucking lentil soup? It's like, I can't believe that you're cooking in my restaurant. You don't even know how to make a lentil soup. You should be able to make delicious star food with nothing else but potatoes, onions, and eggs. You know, like that should be enough for you as a chef to make something delicious. And he just like kept talking to this guy and while the guy was like standing there just crying quietly to himself, you know, <laughs> just in shame because also it happened in front of everybody, the whole team, front of house, sommeliers, all the chefs sitting there eating together. And yeah, it was really, it was really horrible. Yeah, I've heard stories of places like that, that when the chef would come in, a chef that would, you know, be like that about staff food and the staff food was not good enough. All the head chefs, all the chef, the parties would stand up and, and leave. Somebody, <laughs> they, they, they rather not eating, not having lunch instead of seeing that spectacle in the middle of midday, you know, like. Yeah. But if you make good stuff food, you can quickly establish yourself as like one of the guys, you know, like one of the people because you, you, you're taking care of people also, you know, you make it, you make the little extra effort. You're like, okay, I got to make a salad for stuff. I don't really want, and I don't really have the time, but fuck it. I'm going to make it as nice as I can. People appreciate that. Yeah. No, no, no. That, that's something I really learned. And also, I, I mean, be smart. If you don't know how to cook lentils, Staff meal is the perfect place to learn how to do that, putting in practice, learning new dishes, traditional dishes that you will never cook in a restaurant. Exactly. Uh, because like mom and grandma recipes, that's a place to experiment with that. It's like a lab, you know, that you can take yeah. advantage of instead of taking it as a, oh man, I have to cook here uh, instead of being in the plating section at the pass, you know, like you, you can't yes. be there without knowing the first things first, you know? Absolutely. 100%. And it's like a misguided thing. It's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to know how to cook really well, you know, or you want to be the guy in the fancy jacket at the pass who calls out the orders, you know, you can't be one without being the other or you can, but you'll not be good at your job. Well, uh, other fucked up stories I remember uh, was... <laughs> There was this place, you know, that they didn't have a dishwasher, which is, again, like a super stupid thing to do. Yeah. And the resolution was, well, the chef can stay um, half, an hour, half an hour, one hour after service, cleaning all the dishes, and then they go, you know, like, I'm so clever. That's such a, Easy, yeah. uh, such a smart solution. And, of course, if you do that to a team of chefs, also, it's need to be said that people that work in kitchens are not fancy intellectuals. These are people that you will find in punk rock concerts or, you know, like all sorts of street environments. Used to be anyway. Used to be. Now it's hipster kids that <laughs> want to rebel against their parents. <laughs> With tattoos of, <laughs> of, of kitchen utensils. <laughs> of, a, of a, yeah, of a fucking chef's knife. <laughs> Anyways, uh, like the, uh, what was I saying? 
the dishwashing. Yeah, exactly. So the solution was okay. Uh, so we just throw the plates away. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> systematically every day they would Just throw like you know three bags full of plates like fuck them you know like That's you want to save money here's your savings uh, asshole it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> so crazy <laughs> oh, but it's a good example of like hey if you treat your people like shit they're gonna not give a single shit exactly you know? I mean if you treat them like rats they're going to become rats actually they're gonna become rats know? yeah absolutely no that's very very true you know it's, um, and that's why it's like cultivating like a kitchen culture, you know, it's, it's so important where, you know, you have people that like ride and die with you, you know, the best like relationships with people that I've had in kitchens where, where you were in, a, you had a relationship where you as a manager, they knew that you wanted the best for them. Right. And that you were there to look after them and to teach them and to guide them. And it was like a mutual benefit, you know? And like when you were able to like push them really, really hard and afterwards, you know, after you give like 110%, be able to kind of like finish service and like pat each other on the back and be like, hey, that was really good. You know, Mm -hmm. like that's, that is the best. But like, if you just take and take and take and you say, oh yeah, hey, just work a day extra. No, no problem. Hey, you, you have, you don't have anything to do, right? Just stay another hour. You know, it doesn't matter. I know this, it says this in your contract, but aren't you committed to the restaurant? It's like, well, if I commit to the restaurant, what do you commit to me? Yeah. And also, I mean, this, uh, I had a friend just recently, he was called for, for a job interview, right? Yeah. And he was like, I'm not sure about the payment. Not sure about it. The guy calls him and says, uh, no worries. You come here. I'll, I'll invite you. You know, so so you have a meal and, and we talk it over. Everything's going to be fine. And of course, you come here means you have to buy a, a flying ticket, yeah. you know? And he was like, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced. I'm thinking I'm, I'm not going to take it. I need to take a ticket now. But besides the, the salary you're offering me, it's not what I'm looking for. So let's leave it like that. Uh, he sent like a, whatever, an SMS. The guy calls completely mental. Because how does he dare to, you know, to not accept his offer and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I mean, again, like this, uh, this shows that things are gods in their little world, uh, you know, and they have to be praised as such. It's so absurd. And you, you get to see the, still today, I'm talking about the, this was like just last week I heard this story, you know. Well, what chef was it? We can, we can, we can cut it out or we can beep it out. What chef was it? Tell me. I, I think it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's like, Hey, but it's good, you know, because he got the confirmation that his decision was right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. It's like a red flag. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Because yeah. I, I mean, if you were like a, some, someone, I, I don't know what word to use, elegant or more sophisticated, you say, okay. Uh, thanks for everything. Period. Yes. End of the conversation. Goodbye. That's it. You know, you don't call him. How dare you not to take the job I'm offering you and blah, blah, blah. You know, like who yeah. does that? Uh, you know, Who like, does that? Yeah. Psychopaths. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like you say, also kind of like, all right, you know, I think it's like totally normal. And it took me a while to also accept this in my, in my head, you know, <laughs> that if somebody's ha- like wants to hire you, like if you're already an established professional and you know, they say, I want you to come to cook in my restaurant, to manage this, blah, blah, blah. And they want to hire you from like, you know, the other side of the globe, you know, it's not like nobody should expect you to buy a plane ticket. It's very simple. If they want to hire you, if they want to hire internationally, they have to pay for the plane ticket, for the accommodation for one day, you know, et cetera. And, you know, like ideally, you know, show you the restaurant also where they're at. I think that's like, that's super normal. It should be anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, and, and going crazy about it. <laughs> you know, going crazy yeah, that no, uh, someone crazy. Well, and and the other story about fucked up characters I wanted to tell. I had this uh, this chefs. You know, the, the they were related like cousins, and they became like really like uh, famous afterwards. And I was working with them, and I also uh, was in contact with a guy who worked with them for a long while. I think he was even his head chef for a while. So we were. Talking and talking and telling stories because these guys were so fucked up, man. 
They would do mm. things like, you know, you would see them coming on the on the day on their day off <laughs> to the restaurant and taking like a, a pineapple and a steak and take them out. Um, this is for a a test. I'm going to do at home and would leave, you know, like. <laughs> 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 this is, uh... And I remember we, man, that was so so crappy. We would go to this, you know, like, like a nice. You know, like, like an old school beach restaurant, and we would do a catering there. So he was like the invited chef, goes to this restaurant to give a dinner for a special event. So we would use this host kitchen, so to say. Uh. And the instruction, the instruction was to steal everything we could, to take trays, spoons. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Because we had so many problems with Tupperwares and all these kind of things. And after that event, we had everything, you know, like tons of Tupperwares. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so crazy, man. <laughs> and this guy would do these kind of things over and over again. And you would see him talking in interviews, like making things up out of nowhere. You know, like, yeah, we took some plankton and infused it with sand. And the, the reporter like, sand? Yes, so then all the chefs, you know, looking like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that that also happens a lot, you know, like yeah. people bullshit talking about dishes. Oh, yes, this was uh, this herb taken from the forest where a nun grew it and would sing to it every day. And it's bought from the supermarket, you know, like this kind of thing. Oh man, I've seen that so much, you know, also in like, uh, like Nordic restaurants. In top restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like you see the, the Netflix shows, the chef's tables, and it's like, look at this carrot, you know, like, oh, this is the most <laughs> beautiful carrot. And then when you go work there, you know, it's like the fucking supermarket truck, just like. <laughs> you were lying about seafood uh, origins, yes. you know, like, yeah, this is uh, an Atlantic Hague and this and that. And it's whatever, man, you know, like. Yeah, it's it's pretty shameless. And that's why, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm glad that we're moving away from that a little bit, you know, and we're just sort of like, I, I think like less pretentiousness is the way to go, you know. That's it for this week's episode of Potluck Food Talks. If you like what we're doing, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok as Potluck Food Talks. The show airs every Monday. 